mountains I can see forever Across the span of time and space In your presence I can see forever Reflections of the love that lights your face Just give me Jesus. 
This song is called, I Want to Be Pleasing to You, Lord. I want to be pleasing to you. Final heartbeat, kiss 
the world goodbye then go in peace and laugh on glory's side the flag of jesus flag of jesus flag of jesus his face to shine upon you today hallelujah just let me get set up here i don't know why it is it seems like uh, i never get used to this um you know just so you know um in all the years that i've been uh, ministering i gotta tell you that there's times where even though i've been doing it for years i still get butterflies I'm still kind of butterflyish, I guess, if you want to say. Uh, hopefully, the sound's okay. Give me a thumbs up and let me know that the sound is good. And um, praise the Lord for that. Amen. Let me see. I'm going to bring up something real quick, and then we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, we're believing God. We're praying right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. We lift up. Lord, those that are in mourning, as I did a funeral yesterday, Lord, and a service, memorial, and Father, many others that are uh, just facing difficult times, hard times, challenging times, we just lift them up before you, Lord. We pray today, Father, for the Spirit of the Lord to be upon every person now, in the sound of my voice, Father, Lord, we're thanking you for the glory of God. We're thanking you, Father, for all that you do. And Father, we just give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. We ask the Lord that you would move by your spirit, Lord God, even in the midst of all that we see going on and happening all around us. We ask, Father, now, Lord God, for your blessing. We ask, Lord God, that you would just, um, Lord, bless us today with the reading of your word. And, Father, everyone that is watching today, we lift you up. Leticia, we lift you up. Michelle, Eddie, my brother Ed, God bless you in the name of Jesus uh, we're lifting you up, uh, Kalul, uh, I, I know I'm saying your wrong name, but Rosemary, the Lord bless you, Deborah, God bless you, Fred, Yolanda, Dennis, all the way in Uganda, Africa, we're so glad to see you this morning, Yolanda, we lift you up to the Lord, Charles, uh, brother, we just pray for your family, we ask the Lord God just to comfort, and I know that you are comforted because of the fact that, praise God, that your father knew the Lord. He walked with Jesus and he know, knew the power of God. And so thank you, Lord, for the promise of resurrection. Thank you, Lord God, that when Jesus died, Lord God, he didn't stay in a grave, Lord God. But just like Jesus said, destroy this temple. And he was talking about his body. And he said that in three days, I'll raise it up. Father, we thank you that he was raised by the power of God. He was resurrected. He conquered the grave. He conquered death. He defeated the powers of darkness. We thank you, Lord God. The word of God says for this purpose, the son of God was manifested, revealed, came onto the earth to destroy the works of the devil. And Father, we thank you for that. You said, Lord, behold, I give you power 
to thread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. And Lord, I know that just means that we're not moved by fear. Fear does not dominate. Fear does not rule or reign. But Father, we thank you, Lord God, you gave us power and authority. And Father, I pray today, Lord, that you will bless every person watching, every person listening. I pray for my wife, Annette, if she's also watching, and actually she's next to me. But Father, I lift her up to you now. Jackie, we pray for you. My brother, Sal Rodriguez, we lift you up in the name of Jesus and Father, we thank you. We praise you now, Father. Let the word of the Lord come forth. God, give us revelation knowledge, Father. I thank you, Lord God, that when um, when you asked, when Peter was asked, whom do son of man say, whom do they say that I am? And he said that some say you're the prophet, some say you're a teacher, some say you're this, you're that. But Jesus, you said to him, but who do you say that I am? And Lord, I thank you. He said that thou art the Christ, thou art the Messiah, thou art the son of the living God. And thank you, Father, that it says in your word, Father, that Lord God, you said that flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father, which is in heaven and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So Father, we thank you now in Jesus mighty name. Come on, lift your hands and say amen. I want you to high five somebody next to you in the name of Jesus. We're lifting up also, we're lifting up uh, our brother um, Peter. Uh, we pray in Jesus' name. Peter's cancer is gone after three sessions of chemo. We have been praying for him. And uh, the last, I don't know how many weeks, Elaine, that uh, Elaine came on here was asking prayer for him and praise God. We're so happy to report that he is uh, free of cancer. Amen. Let me see. I think I forgot to put something here. Give me a moment. Let me see. Uh oh, here we go. Oh my God, that's not it. Sorry, people. Sorry, folks. <laughs> uh, híjole, frijoles. Anyways, the Lord is good, isn't he? We can do without it today. So today, uh, I, I'm just going to take some time, and I'm going to just, uh, you know, as most of you seen the, the headline there, I think it's on there, I'm not sure. But what I'm speaking on today is hearing the voice of God and not hardening our hearts. Hearing the voice of the Lord and not hardening our hearts, you know. Uh, I believe, I still believe today that we can have the voice of the Lord. Oh, my Lord. And when I say the voice of the Lord, I believe in miracles. I believe that the Lord can speak to us and move upon us and his voice transforms. His voice has power uh, you know that the Bible tells us that the Lord spoke and the worlds were created. He, he spoke and he created the worlds. The worlds were created by what he spoke. Amen. And the Lord said, and, and I got to tell you, when the Lord said, it was so. He created, he spoke the world into existence and I, I got to tell you that he's been, always has been speaking, revealing what he said to us. So the very first scripture that I want you to turn to, and uh, let's go through the Bible, because one of the things that's so important is that I don't want to just say to you what I want to say or what I'm feeling, but I, I want us to go to the word of the Lord. I want us to go to the scripture and what does God's word say, amen? It's so important. What did Jesus say? Man shall not live by bread alone. What does that mean? Man doesn't live by carnitas, tostadas, fish, barbecue, whatever. He doesn't live by bread alone. Yes, it sustains us. Yes, it helps to give us uh, nutrition and all the, that kind of stuff. But Jesus said, 
Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Man, that's so powerful is that he's reminding us that we are to live by the word of God. Okay, so I'm reading today as I'm speaking, hearing his voice and not hardening our hearts. Amen. Uh, if anything could break hardness of hearts, the master Jesus through his word is an expert, is a master at breaking or should I say of softening hard hearts. Listen to this, um, hearing the voice of God, God who at sundry times, listen to what he says, at sundry times and in diver manners spoke in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. Listen again, in time past, God spoke through the prophets. That's why it's important for us to know what the prophets have said, to um, hear the word of the Lord, hear what the prophets declared. And of course, we know that uh, one of the last prophets to speak to us was Malachi. And um, if you uh, know the book of Malachi, you know, the Malachi is telling us that the time will come where he'll restore our hearts uh, to our, the father's hearts and the children, etc. It's a prophecy of restoration of God moving. But he was one of the last prophets to speak. And of course, we went, I think they went 400 years without having God speak. But uh, so within that, all the prophets were doing what? Pointing to Jesus Christ. That's what they were doing. Listen to what he said. And verse 2, Hebrews 1, verse 2, has in these last days, say it with me, the last days, tell somebody these last days. I believe we're living in the last days. We are for sure in the last days. Amen. Uh, has in these last days spoken unto us by his son. Oh, Lord, we got to know that the Lord has spoken to us in these last days. He set a time frame or a time uh, clock, so to speak. And he says that from the day that Jesus came, from the day that Jesus was born, his birth transformed, set a marker in human history. And from that moment forward, he began to speak to us through his son. This is so vital. This is so critical for us to understand because, you know, if we don't watch out, then we got false prophets. Then we got people coming, claiming they're speaking in the Lord. Uh, one of the things I'm, one of the ones I'm thinking of is, um, what's his name? Smith, um, who, shoot, I can't remember his name. I used to study these guys uh, just to, for research purposes. But uh, the Mormon church, uh, he claimed, he came speaking, saying that he got, uh, tablets from God and that these tablets were hidden away and he found these tablets and he needed glasses to interpret what those tablets were saying, claiming that those words were uh, from God. But no, 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 no. In these last days, God has spoken to us by his son. Isn't that powerful just to know that God has spoken to us through his son. So we got to know that. And so listen on in verse two, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power, uh, when he had by himself purged our sins. Listen to this, man. This is so powerful. This, this scriptures are loaded for bear, man. I'm telling you, double barrel shotgun, ready to go hunting. And so what does he say? Uh, in these uh, uh, last days, 
uh, he spoke to us to his son who came. And what does he say about his son? Who's the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself, he purged our sins. Tell somebody, my sin is purged. Oh, but Rudy, I remember when you did that. And I remember, and you were this, and you were that. Uh, and? <laughs> So does the devil. He'll always try to throw things in your face. He'll always try to put your face in the mud. He'll always try to get you down. And I like what uh, that song, uh, Sal Rodriguez, I, I don't know if he's, I, yeah, he's still there. Yeah, that was Joseph Smith. Thank you, Sal. But one of the things, uh, the songs that they do is don't let no one put you down. Get you down. So get you down, right? All right. Uh, so, Sal, we got to have you sing that song and you got to like uh, just say what the Lord has done. It is permanent. Don't let anyone put you down. And listen to what he says here. Uh, he purged our sins and sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Oh, Lordy. Verse four, being made so much better than the angels, he has by inheritance of, obtained a more excellent name than they. Listen to what he says. Verse five, for unto which of the angels said he at any time, thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father and he will be to me a son. Amen. Wow, that is so powerful. Now, I want to read the same verses, but I want to go to this big old book here. Uh, I'm going to go over to Hebrews. I love this translation of the Bible. This is, uh, if you're not familiar with this one, it is the CS. Uh, this is the CSB Study Bible. And actually, this is, um, let me see this so you know. This is a uh, Bible, of course, uh, a good Bible, I think. Oh, no, this isn't the one I'm thinking. Well, anyways, this is a good one. This is the Christian Standard Bible. All right, so in Hebrews, and listen to the way he says it, because they got another one that I really like a lot. I recommend these Bibles. Um, archaeological, archaeology Study Bible. Man, I love this book. English Standard Version, but listen to Hebrews, and I want to read this to you because I, I think this is so good. What I like about this Bible, I mean, man, it'll give you introductions to Hebrews, and it'll just give you all kinds of cool stuff, but now listen to the Word of the Lord. Listen to how this one says it. That's just a little plug for those of you that want to go deeper into the Scripture. Listen to this, uh, Hebrews chapter one, I'm reading this CSB Bible, verse one, long ago, God spoke to the fathers by the prophets. And just so you know, these are, these guys are considered our fathers. I was doing a little study on the, um, the patriarchs or the uh, tree, the family tree of Jesus, uh, because I, I remember uh, years ago when I was at, um, uh, I'd be at county and then, you know, I uh, hate to say it, but county jail, etc. But I had a little New Testament and uh, I'd begin to read the Bible and I would get stuck and hung up on so-and-so began so-and-so and began so-and-so. -so. Then I real, uh, you know, and, and I would get discouraged and put the Bible down. But now I'm realizing that it is so important because these are our fathers. This is our heritage. These are... These are where we get and we follow the, the, our ancestry. This is handed down from generations to generations to generations. They heard the voice of God. They heard God speak all the way as we're going to see even Adam and Eve. We know that they used to hear the voice of the God. They would fellowship with God in the cool of the day in the garden. And we know that uh, later on, uh, after they fell, we know that in Genesis chapter 3, verse 8, it says that they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. 
But uh, so I want you to really uh, understand why this um, is so important because Hebrews, he's letting us know that yes, indeed, we heard the voice of the Lord and, and he spoke to us. And if you look at Jesus, even when he was baptized, the Bible says that um, when he was baptized and he came up out of, the, out of the water, the spirit descended upon him as a form of the dove. And they heard a voice saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And so it's powerful because the voice of the Lord is a powerful thing for us. Listen to this. Okay, I'm back to Hebrews chapter uh, 1, verse 1. CSB Bible, long ago, God spoke to the fathers. That's why I went by that little uh, uh, rabbit trail. It's important because sometimes we just hear words, we hear scripture, and we don't know the backdrop. We don't know the background to it. And we just, you know, uh, what, I, I think what this does, it solidifies, it strengthens why we believe what we believe. Because of our forefathers, these are our forefathers. These are the ones that we're hearing from God. These were the ones that were being moved by the Spirit of God. The Bible says that holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Spirit of God. So not only were they being motivated, inspired, but they were hearing the, the word of the Lord. You know, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, I believe it's verse 6, says that faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes by the word of God. I believe that he is really saying to us how important it is for us to hear. Uh, you want a hearing ear? You want to be able to hear God? Then you got to be able to get in the word of God, stay in the word of the Lord. Man, that's why it's so important. I heard years ago a good Bible teacher said, you know, in the morning is the best time to get into the word. Why? Because you just woke up. Your mind usually is refreshed unless you woke up out of a nightmare. But your your mind is refreshed and, um, you know, and boom, you start out with the word of the Lord. And boy, your day, it, it, it just goes better. It just seems a lot better. You're able to uh, get clarity and to hear the voice of the Lord. Uh, let me get back over here. I know I take a little time on this, but I think it's important. Long ago, God spoke to the fathers by the prophets at different times in different ways. Amen. Verse 2 says, in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. God has appointed him heir of all things and made the universe through him. Verse three says, here's why I wanted to read this to you and I don't have my pen, I'll mark it all up. Um, but listen to verse three, I love this because the son who he spoke to us through, listen to what he says. The son is the radiance of God's glory. He's ra he is the radiance of God's glory and the ex exact expression of his nature. Wow, he is the radiance. Jesus is the radiance of God's glory and the exact expression of his nature, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of majesty on high. Verse 4, and he became superior to the angels just as the name he inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did he ever say, you are my son? Today I have become your father, or again I will be his father, and he will be my son. Look at verse 6. Again, he brings his firstborn into the world. Wow. Think about it. Jesus is the firstborn, his firstborn into the world. Later on, 
as you study the scripture, you'll find out that not only is Jesus the fir his firstborn, I know it's, it's a mystery, that's the mystery of God. Hey, I, I mean, if we could understand God in his, in his totality, if we could put God in a microscope and uh, dissect God and figure him out, uh, it'll never happen. He's God. We, we will know him and we will know him as we are known and that when we're finally in heaven and all the um, uh, barriers, all the uh, blinders, everything is removed, then we will see him as he is. Amen. Now listen to this. So it says that I will be his father and he will be my son again when he brings the firstborn into the world. And I, I forgot to say, Jesus also is the firstborn from the dead. He's the first one to have a resurrected body. He's the first one to taste death, to uh, actually experience death and go through death and then be raised in power and glory. And it is so glorious he, that resurrected his Jesus resurrected body is so powerful and so glorious. I love what I see Jesus doing after he been raised from the dead. One of the first things we see him doing is going through a wall. He goes through a wall and he's telling peace, <laughs> be not afraid, it is I. We see that after he's raised from the dead, the, the uh, apostles, uh, disciples, some of, they went back to fishing and they're rolling up near the seashore and lo and behold, as they're looking down the seashore, that reminds me of sweet Sally sells seashells near the seashore. I used to get messed up on that in elementary. Anyways, when they roll up, guess what? They, they see, and boy, they, they, they're tripping big time. Why? Because it is the Lord. And what's he doing? He's barbecuing fish. And I think one of the disciples jumps in the water, gets over there. I think another time he's telling them, cast your nets on the one side of the water. And uh, sure enough, they get a big catch. So the reason I said that is because as we're looking at the scripture, verse 6, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 6, he is the firstborn into the world. And I have to say, and we're not, I'm not going to go there with the scriptures today, but it is a good thing to study and watch what I'm saying, study what I'm saying as it relates to those born from amongst the dead. That's what resurrection is about. That's why uh, the last few days I, I, I did two funerals. And uh, that's my message is that our faith, our trust, our hope is resurrection from amongst the dead. Hallelujah. Man, I, I, I'll tell you, I, I, I get excited because, hallelujah, I love what Jesus said. Behold, I am he that was alive, that was dead. But he said, I'm alive forevermore. He's overcome the dead. He's conquered death and he's conquered the grave and death. And he has the power of the keys of Hades and of death. He has all authority. He has all power. This is what Jesus has. He has all power, all authority. My goal is to point you to Jesus, to see Jesus, to recognize Jesus Christ for who he is. He is Lord. He is master. He is sitting at the right hand of God, the father. Amen. And he's revealing himself through the power of the Holy Spirit. Boy, uh, hallelujah. I got to read the scripture here. Okay, here, we're at verse six. When he brings his firstborn into the world, that's why I went off on this little tangent here. He says, and let all God's angels worship him. And verse seven, and about the angels, he says, he makes his angels win wings and his servants a fiery flame. But to the son, listen to what he said to the son, Jesus, our Lord, no matter what's happening in this, in this world globally, and I know that I, I, I shared a message here that everything that can be shaken will be shaken 
but that which is founded upon the rock that was rejected, the cornerstone, that which is settled on the rock, which is Christ Jesus, cannot and will not be shaken. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. Amen. But listen to what he says about his son, verse 8, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8. But to the son, what did he say to the son? Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. Wow. Your throne is forever and ever. You belong to the kingdom of God. Our king, our Lord sits on the throne and it is forever and ever. Amen. Praise God. And listen what else he says. And the scepter of your kingdom is a scepter. Some translations say a scepter of righteousness, but this one says is a scepter of justice. Amen. So one of the things um, about a scepter from my understanding is that a scepter, when a king holds a scepter, um, you can't even speak uh, or make any kind of movement or commotion in Goshen uh, unless that scepter is pointed in your direction and boom, it'll give you authority. It'll give you power. It'll give you the opportunity to access, to move forward, to open your mouth and to speak because that's what the scepter does. That is the power of the scepter. I was listening to our brother um, Vince and our, my brother uh, up in the San Jose, Martin? no, in San Jose, California. Um, uh, man, I'm sorry, I can't remember his name. Uh, usually Vince, he, uh, Vince Gomez is in ministry with him. But anyways, they were sharing how that they were in some part of the country and they couldn't even um, speak to the... Um, king of that nation until he actually pointed his scepter to them. And, um, you know, it's, for us in this, um, in our civilization, in our world, we don't understand that. We don't understand what it means and how that works. But I got to tell you, his throne, oh God, is forever and ever. And listen to this. It is a scepter the scepter of your kingdom is a scepter of justice. Verse 9, you have loved righteousness, you hated lawlessness, and this is why God, your God, has appointed you um, with the oil of joy beyond your companions. All right, so let me go back over here to my other Bible here. Uh, so thank you guys for watching. The Lord bless you. But I, I got to get back over to Hebrews because one of the things, what am I speaking on today? I'm speaking about hearing the voice of God and not hardening your hearts. Amen. And so I, I just said that how that, um, that God has spoken to us through his word, through his son, um, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and He has spoken to us. Amen. And so we just seen how that in the time past, God spoke to us through His, um, to our fathers, our ancestors, um, by the prophets. But in these last days, He is speaking to us and has, has spoken to us and is speaking to us through his son. Hebrews chapter 2, jump down with me to Hebrews chapter 2, and I'm reading from the King James, verse 1, therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed, give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. How are we going to be able to escape? How are we going to be able to stand? How are we going to be able to stand our ground and be strong in the Lord in the midst of this if we neglect so great a salvation 
which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. Look at verse 4, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 4. What am I talking about? Hearing the voice of God, paying heed to the Lord what he's saying to us. That's why, uh, friends, beloved brothers, my sisters, I encourage you to follow the Lord, to adhere to his word, to search the scriptures, and give yourself to the Lord Jesus. Amen. What does he say? Um, in verse, I think I said I was at verse uh, three. How should we escape? Let's see. If we neglect this great salvation, which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. So they heard him and they have confirmed to us what they heard. Look at verse four, Hebrews two, verse four. And, and down in the latter part of the verse, it says, God, of verse 4, verse 4, chapter 2, verse 4, Hebrews 2, verse 4, God also bearing them witness. So what they were hearing, God was bearing witness with what? Both with signs and wonders. Signs and wonders and with diver miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his will. For unto the angels has he not put in subjection the world to come whereof we speak, but in a certain place testifies, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou has visited him? Then, of course, he goes on to talk about how that he gave him honor and um uh, uh, gave him power and honor and glory. But look at, jump down with me to verse 9. But we see Jesus. Do we see Jesus? But we see Jesus who is made a little lower than the angels for suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. And it became him for whom all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons. Here we go. In bringing many sons into the, um, unto the glory and bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. Amen. So now, now let's go ahead um, and I got to uh, start winding this down. I just have a few minutes. The Lord bless you guys. We, I'm so thankful for you today. We appreciate all of you that are tuned in. Uh, share the, these um, um, services. Um, share this with your friends and um, um, family. And um, let the Lord um, be God in the midst of all that we see going on. Amen. All right, so I'm going to be closing off with uh, don't harden your heart. So I, I, I hit first on hearing the word, hearing the Lord. Listen, Jesus said uh, in John chapter 10, verse 4 and 5, what did Jesus say? He said this, um, he said it, he goes before the and he puts forth his own sheep and John, just write it down for the sake of time. But we know that in John chapter 10, uh, verse 4 and 5 on down, he's, he does tell us that my sheep know my voice and a voice of a stranger they will not follow. Uh, in, in, in the book of Corinthians, he says that many voices have gone into the world. And um, we need to be able to discern the voice of the Lord know when we're hearing God. I got to tell you, the way that we know that we're hearing God, it will always align, it will always line up with the word of the Lord. It's not going to be some quacky, far out prophecy that don't even align itself with the word of God. This is just something that I've used over the years is to try to, um, you know, is, it, is he saying it in the word? You know, when I first came to the Lord, I remember, um, man, uh, God moved in my life so strong. 
And I, I remember uh, just saying like, man, um, you know, just what the Lord was doing in my life and, um, you know, uh, moving in a powerful way. I, I remember uh, saying, um, God moving in my life and um, on, oh my God, he became so real. But anyways, um, I'll go to church service, every church service, I'll be sitting in, in the front as close as possible with my Bible open and carrying a tape player and recording sometimes. But um, sometimes um, I would go places uh, just to go and see if God's going to speak to me. <laughs> I would go visit somebody or a church or whatever and, um, and just to see if the Lord would... Um, uh, speak to me, um, you know, through that uh, service. And I remember one time, I'm, uh, I don't know if I went to go hear Shambox or somebody, and I'm sitting up toward the front, and I'm like, Lord, if, if, if you're speaking to me, Lord, put it in his heart to say something to me and let me know that you're speaking to me. And um, uh, guess what? He didn't do it. But I, I felt and I, I really sensed that the Lord was saying, Rudy, I am speaking to you through my word. I want you to be able to hear my word. I want you to be able to, that is, I'm, to understand that I am speaking to you through my word. That's why the Bible says that the Holy Spirit will bring things to our remembrance. What is the Holy Spirit bringing to our remembrance? What did Jesus say? Jesus said, all things that I have spoken unto you, he says that the Holy Spirit will bring it to your remembrance. That's why it is so important to hear the word of the Lord, because in the midst of everything and anything, we can hear the voice of the Lord in the face of discouragement, in the face of depression, in the face of darkness, in the face of threats and everything else. We can hear the word of the Lord. We, we can have the Spirit speaking to us and moving upon our lives. Um, I'm thinking of Elijah, right? Elijah, after one of his most powerfulest victory, what happens? He defeats the prophets of Baal and Jezebel hears about it and she puts a, a death threat on him. She puts a hit on him. She puts a green light on him to put a death threat on Elijah. So after a powerful victory, what does Elijah do? He's on the run. He's on the move. He's hiding. He's discouraged. He's bummed out. He's depressed. He's in a cave. And what's happening in that cave? All of a sudden, uh, of course, the Lord was taking care of him, even in the cave, even in this, this uh, lockdown, right? The Lord was still taking care of him. And I say to you today by the word of the Lord that even in the midst of all this stuff, the Lord is going to take care of you. And the Lord is going to watch over you. The Lord is going to provide for you. Because we know that even when Elijah, when he was in the cave, he sent food, he sent rain. I don't know how many times he would send food to him. Anyways, the Lord says, what are you doing here? And then he gives this narrative. Lord, I, I jacked up the prophets of Baal. I slew them and all this stuff. And now this chick, crazy cyclona woman is after me. You know, I'm just saying. Crazy girl put a hit on me now and... And boom, the Lord began to let him know that, praise God, the Lord is still with him. And so we know that what there was a big quake, there was a wind, there was a fire. And what did the Lord say? But the, the Lord was not in the fire. The Lord was not in the quake. He was not in all of that. But in the midst of the cave, in the midst of all the drama and the trauma, what happened? The Lord was in that still, small voice. Amen. Good morning, Carmen, and everyone that's watching here. So God bless you guys. So where was I? So my sheep know my voice. John chapter 10, verse 4 through 5. My sheep know my voice and the voice of a stranger they will not follow. It says, and, the, and listen to this. 
for they know my voice, right? Jesus said, and when he puts forth his own sheep, he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice and a stranger will they not follow but will flee from him for they know not the voice of strangers. Isn't that something? How that uh, these sheep do not know the voice of strangers. Strangers in the night? No, I'm only kidding. I know. Why are you telling me to cut it in there? I'm only kidding. I'm just saying that, you know, there are so many strange, weird stuff that you're going to find out there and um, people that will abuse and misuse the scripture. All I can tell you is, is let's look to Jesus. Let's look to our Lord, our Savior. Amen. So let me close off with this um, Hebrews chapter three. And I want to jump down over to uh, verse. Why don't we go over to verse um, seven? And I'm going to close off today. Uh, and I'm speaking on hearing the voice of the Lord. And as you're hearing the voice of the Lord, do not harden. Don't become hard. Don't allow your heart to become a rock. I love what the prophet of old said, that I will take away the stony heart and I will give you a heart of flesh and I will put my spirit within you my spirit in that after that removing of that heart of flesh, that rocky heart, heart, putting his spirit, he's softening it up and he put his spirit so that you could hear the word of the Lord. Don't harden your heart as in the provocation. Look at this verse seven, Hebrews chapter three, verse seven. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost says, this is the Holy Spirit saying today, if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. You know, I was looking at that word provocation and it literally means that, you know, that you, you're resistant, um, that you come against and you resist and you fight and, and uh, you literally uh, will fight against all that represents God, you know, it's, it's something, let, what, let me look up this word, because I was looking this up, man, and I'll, I'll tell you, provocation also means um, to deliberately, oh boy, this thing, there we go, uh, goading, it also means to make someone angry with action or speech, make someone angry deliberately. So what was happening was that as, as they were hearing the Lord, uh, he had to tell them in Hebrews uh, 3, 7, wherefore, as the Holy Ghost says, today, if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation where they were hardening themselves deliberately um, resisting, fighting, uh, and um, repelling, and at the same time, tempting God. It says, don't do it. Uh, in the day of wilderness, and listen, to this, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation of the day of, of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, they proved me, they saw my works 40 years. Uh, wherefore was I grieved with that generation? Why was he grieved with them? Because he said they always err in their hearts and they have not known my ways. So I swore to them that they will not enter my rest. Look at verse 12. Therefore take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. Notice that he calls an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God, but exhort one another daily, encourage each other, Speak great words over each other. Encourage and build and lift each other up in the Lord. I don't care if you do it through a text, through a phone call, through a Facebook, whatever. Amen. But let's encourage and exhort one another daily. And listen what else he says. 
Uh, today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of, of sin. Amen. Well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, close there. I felt like reading that from the CSB Bible, and we, we are going to close off here. Uh, I'm going to pray, and we are closing off, and want to thank you all for tuning in today. The Lord is good. The Lord is worthy. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 7, uh, the way it says it in the CSV, I just want to say this to you. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion, as they call it, the, um, as in the provocation. It was a literal rebellion, just straight up rebellion on the day of testing in the wilderness where your fathers tested me, tried me and saw my works for 40 years. Therefore, I was provoked. I was provoked to anger with that generation and said that they always go astray in their hearts and they have not known my way. So I swore in my anger that they will not enter my rest um, today. And then he goes on to say, um, watch out, brothers and sisters, that there won't be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God, but encourage each other daily while it is still called today so that none of you is hardened by sin's deception for we have become participants in Christ if we hold firmly until the end the reality that we had in the start as it is said today if you hear his voice do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion amen praise God Worthy is the Lord. Let's pray. Thank you all for tuning in today. Yes, the parents were uh, grape, sour grapes, you know. Of course, you know, uh, people go through stuff. And, uh, of course, we see people that, uh, you know, sometimes they start out really great following the Lord. And some people end up bitter. They end up falling away, bitter, uh, hardened hearts and disappointed uh, because maybe for whatever reason, maybe sometimes things didn't go their way. Uh, maybe sometimes uh, things didn't happen the way they anticipated it. And uh, because of that, they, they begin to falter and fall away. Amen. All right. I'm going to play a uh, song uh, here for you. And hopefully it won't be too loud here. Let me see. All right. Here we go. Father, I pray. Let's pray. Lord, I, I pray for everybody watching. I lift you up before the Lord. Father, I just pray, Father God, that we're able to hear the voice of the Lord. I pray, Father God, that uh, we hear the voice of the Lord. I pray that we do not become hardened through disappointment, through things that come our way. And, but Father, I just pray, and even as our brother Vince is saying, that we would protect our hearts according to Proverbs 4, that we protect our hearts with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. And Father, we thank you that that's where you're working at today. You're working in our hearts. You're working in our lives. We thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I'm, gonna, I'm playing this song as we close off. Uh, they may uh, ding this song because, you know, anytime you play songs that are um, copyrighted and whatnot, but I'm going to play it. And uh, it just means I'll have to delete the prayer at the end if I audit, uh, not audit, edit this. <laughs> But it's good for us to do an audit of our faith. God bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord bless you. The Lord use you in a powerful way. I pray that you, um, amen, will remove all guilt, all shame, all condemnation. Because there is therefore no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. May you live and breathe in the power of the Spirit of Christ. 
May the Holy Spirit, may you have the comfort, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit upon your life. In Jesus' name be blessed. Amen. All right. Thank you, guys. I'm going to let this song play. I'm going to crank it up. Somebody was asking, uh, Claudia, I think, was asking what was that song. That was actually um, Grace Flows Down, One Day uh, one day Live, Passion Worship. Anyways, these are like some old songs that I used to enjoy a lot during worship. God bless you guys. Have a great Sunday. Don't forget, we'll be here um, Wednesday at 7.30, I'll, I will be here um, having a live service. Last last Wednesday, uh, I think it was Wednesday, uh, service came on late. I did a message on the reality, a reality check on death. Also, I'm praying for my brother who... His wife passed away, my brother Fernando, and um, the Lord bless you guys. The Lord keep you today. Pouring out, here we go. I'll play this last song. I pray you enjoy. God bless you, Rosemary. Tim Bergstrom, my old buddy, me, Tim. Me, Tim Bergstrom, and uh, Sal Rodriguez, man, we're all at Telfair. There's other, Albert Mesa, also at Telfair. I don't know who else. I think Rosemary might have been at Telfair. God bless you, Charles. I seen you guys were doing the celebration of life for your pops. Man, I tell you, the, one of the pictures, he looked like a, um, a radio announcer, television should have type announcer guy. Let this song bless you. Joe Reynoso, God bless. God bless you, Deborah. Richard, Eco, Eco Blue. Thank you all for your support, your prayers. This is a parachute. Parachute band singing grace. Yes, uh, Donna, God bless you, sis. Pray you're doing uh, a lot better on your, the aches, the pains. Yes, um, so he was a DJ. I mean, boy, he looked like a, not only a DJ, he looked like a movie star. One of the pictures i seen. Lord bless you. I pray that you guys are all having a great Sunday. Valerie, God bless you. Dennis James, the Lord bless you over there in Oxnard. All right, God bless you. Have a great Sunday, everybody. I think that song is over. No, just about, not yet. So Charles, um, his dad was one of the first um, DJs in San Fernando at KS. SV 10.6 FM. Wow. He's the first uh, Spanish speaking disc jockey in the San Fernando Valley. KSSB. KSFB was the station. Bless you, Michelle. Dora, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you all. I do this song. Those of you that don't know, I actually bought like um, a lighting and all that, and man, I look like a, a ghost. Now I'm using something small, smoother. God bless you. I think I am gonna 
end it after this song. So the, the check it out, the thing that I'm doing, I'm playing um, out of my old iPod. Well, check this out. Um, I could, uh, Hey, thank you guys. Adios, adios, adios. Thank you guys. Thank you for your comment on the teaching of God's Word. I appreciate it. I, I have to tell you that, uh, that that's the Lord, man. That's for sure. Hey, let's let's go out with um, a so, Shofar, the prayer. Here, check it out. I love Shofar. Here we go. This is it, you guys, after this. Uh, the, of course, uh, this is uh, uh, the main singer at one time for Kings and Priests, and of course they went through uh, changing and a breakup for a little bit. They're still around, but Art Delegato, here he is. So far, here we go. Be blessed on this song, and then uh, I'll end it, okay? Just to give you a little something to hear. Hey, Susan, God bless. Dana, the Lord bless you. Thank you for your support, guys.
Be blessed. Have a great Sunday. Thank you for tuning in. Bye-bye. See you Wednesday night.